Today we are gathered here to celebrate the victory of Jesus Christ. It's not only a celebration of Jesus Christ, it is a celebration of the victory that is shared with each and every one of us. Today I would like to concentrate on one particular passage, John chapter 20, verses beginning from 19 to 23. <clears throat> This is the first appearance of Jesus Christ to the whole group of disciples. <clears throat> I've given the topic, Be Empowered by the Risen Lord. Be Empowered by the Risen Lord. <clears throat> now, before sharing with you how Jesus empowered the disciples, I would like to share with you how Jesus continues to empower his disciples down through the century but giving you one particular event that took place in history in the beginning of the 20th century now can we have the picture of Jesus yes you would have seen this statue <clears throat> this is called Christ the Redeemer of the Andes there are two statues <clears throat> in Argentina and Chile and one is uh, one of the seven wonders of this world that is Christ the Redeemer that is in different place now there is a story behind the statue of Jesus Christ that is at one particular point Argentina and Chile wanted to wage war against each other now they were postponing the war because the Lenten season was approaching. Both were Christians, both uh, countrymen were Christians. So they said, okay, let's observe the Lenten season and fight with each other after Easter. They had a border issue. But on Easter day in 1900, the Bishop of Argentina, Bishop Benevente, he preached to the congregation on Easter service that war should not be waged against each other because we all are Christians. Now he picked up this passage, John chapter 20, verse 19 onwards, and reiterated the greetings of Jesus Christ. Peace be unto you. He said it twice. So he said, he said, the Lord who rose again and conquered death and sin and Satan wants us to overcome our ill feelings and we should come together through Jesus Christ and make peace with each other. So he pleaded with the congregation to write to the government telling them not to wage war against Chile. And he, as a bishop, encouraged all the congregation to come up with a letter to the government telling them to stop the war. Now, when the bishop of Chile heard about this, he also started preaching in various churches, calling people to make an atom for peace with the other nation, that is Argentinians. Now this went on for some time and in 1902 they asked King George the seventh to be the mediator between the two countries and he accepted and he called for the peace meeting and both the countrymen were there and he talked with each other and they already knew the wish of both the bishops and the pastors and the resolutions of the councils of various, church, various churches. So they decided not to wage war against each other and settle the border issue in a peaceful manner. And not only that, in one of the meetings, somebody said, since we all are Christians, 
since we are called to settle everything in a dialogical way why can't we decide that we will no more wage war against each other and everybody clapped and they decided yes argentina and chile will not wage war against each other now after that someone came with the observation okay if we are not going to wage war against each other what are we going to do with the arms and ammunitions that we have another person came up with a brilliant idea okay if we are not going to use it let's melt them and make a statue of jesus christ and erect it and the border line and in the meantime it was took time some time somebody else already made a statue and an a lady called angela it was close to the president's uh, president of argentina and she pushed through the plan of erecting a statue on the border area now what happened and since the statue was very big they dismantled it and initially they took the parts in the train and after that when they climbed the mountain they used horses and after certain point both the armies took the statue to the top of the mountain and erected the christ the redeemer and the beautiful words that was placed at the foot of jesus christ is this sooner shall these mountains cracks crumble to dust than chile and argentina shall break this peace which at the feet of christ the redeemer they has sworn to maintain and they also had this beautiful phrase peace be unto you and in another block they wrote ephesians chapter 2 verse 14 he is our peace who has made both one now this clearly shows that jesus christ not only redeemed people empowered people to overcome sin all kinds of enmity continuously in this history now we know that jesus christ appeared to disciples as a risen lord and changed their life so the passage that we are going to meditate upon gives us a clear picture how jesus empowered the disciples now we celebrate our easter year after year we come here and glorify the lord proclaim that jesus rose from the dead and even now the his tomb is empty and we say all this but do we allow the risen lord to make a change in our lives first of all we should know how jesus the risen lord made a change in the lives of the disciples so that you will come to know how jesus can change your life too how jesus can empower you too so as i was meditating on this beautiful passage i came up with six p's which tells us how jesus empowered people all the words starts with p that's why i say six p's through which jesus empowered his disciples in the same way he will empower us it was uh, dr a m ramsey who came up with a beautiful statement about the resurrection of jesus christ the gospel without the resurrection was not merely a gospel without its final chapter it was not a gospel at all because it will end with the death of jesus christ because we have the resurrection because jesus rose again from the dead we celebrate 
Easter, not only that, we receive the full gospel, gospel in complete form. So today, as we celebrate Easter, let's know for sure that we have received gospel in full and celebrating God, God's victory over death which is shared with you and me. Now, let me briefly share with you what are the peace that we have in this passage and how they empower us. The first one, presence of the Lord. Now we all know the disciples closed the doors and they were afraid of the Jews because they knew that they have crucified their master and definitely the priest and other people will catch them before they go to Galilee and crucify them also. So they were gripped with fear and they closed the doors. They were hiding from the leaders of the Jews. Now at that point, Jesus entered into this room and assured of his presence in their midst. So as we live in this world and lead a Christian life, the Lord strengthens us with his presence. We all know that God is with us, but many times we fail to realize it. Today, as you celebrate Easter, I would like to place a challenge question before you. How do you experience the presence of God in your life? Do you experience the presence of the Lord all through the day? You know that God is present. You know God is with you. But do you feel the presence? Without the master, the disciple were, disciples were at loss. They were missing the leadership. They didn't know what to do. Then Jesus entered into the room and showed that he, was, he is alive. His presence is there. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, one way that Jesus Christ empowers is that he will help us to realize or experience his presence. I don't want to take much time, but I assure you that you can feel the presence of God. You can feel it. Many a time, when doing prayer or when conduct the service, I can experience the presence of God. Probably to just help you, I'll tell you, you can experience the presence through a small vibration in your body. Or sometimes you will feel as if you are surrounded by small fire. I've experienced that. Now, God assures of his presence in our midst, but in our personal life, also in our personal life. Now, at, on that day, Jesus, by his presence, empowered them. The second thing is, the second P is peace. Jesus said immediately when he entered, peace be unto you. Again, he repeated that, peace be unto you, because he knew very well they were disturbed in mind, they were upset, they were in fear, they need peace. Now, what I would like to clarify with you briefly is that the peace that we understand in Western culture as well as in Indian culture is completely different from the peace that we read in scripture. Let me explain it through two words. You all know that the biblical word for peace is shalom. Right, shalom. Now shalom is different from samadhanam. If you look into the dictionary, all the dictionaries will say peace is calm, quietness, no war. So they put it in a negative uh, way, what peace is. Now we all know in Tamil, we use the word samadhanam. 
Now, I was really shocked when I found this word in Sanskrit uh, dictionary. We are called to study Hebrew, Greek and Sanskrit in the Bible college. I had, uh, I still have the Sanskrit dictionary. I knew this is not a Tamil. Samadhanam, Tamil illa. Amaidi is the right word in Tamil. So I looked into the Sanskrit dictionary and it also gave the word Shanti, Samadhan. In Hindi also they say Samadhan. Then it gave the same uh, definition, calm, quietness, stillness, that sort of thing. Then I was really shocked to note that they gave related words also. And one particular word that shocked me is that Samadhi. So what is Samadhanam? Is what you will experience in the cemetery. No fight, no war, nothing. But that is not a biblical peace. When Jesus said, peace be unto you, he was not talking about the peace that, peace that exists in, at the cemetery. No. In Shalom, it refers to God's full blessing, your holistic blessing. It talks about good health. It talks about calm and quietness. It talks about victory over problems and struggles. It talks about victory over sin. It talks about long life. It talks about a happy family. It talks about children obeying the parents. All kinds of things. So what we see in the Bible with regard to peace or shalom is holistic. And this is what Jesus gave and Jesus gives. That's why he said in John chapter 16 verse 33, My peace I give unto you. This is not the kind that you will see in this world. My peace. So God's peace is different. It is, it is continuous. See, there are two ways of understanding peace. One is inner peace. Another one, interpersonal peace. Inner peace refers to you are calm and quiet and you will trust in God. You will have hope because you know God is with you. There was a competition of paintings on the theme peace. Many people drew many paintings and kept it in the exhibition. And one particular picture won the first prize. That was a picture of a rough sea, a boisterous sea. And in the middle, there was a rock. On top of the rock, there was a nest and there was a mother bird and the chicks and the title was given peace so whatever happens in this world whatever happens in your family whatever happens in your career you will not be disturbed and you will say be still my soul be still and know that God is with you there is a beautiful verse in Psalm 16 Verse 8, it says, Since the Lord is on my right hand, I will not be shaken. I will not be shaken. Sometimes people say, Only Christians can say that. You will not be shaken. Because God is always with you. So Jesus gave peace to them and calmed their mind. The third P that I would like to share with you from the passage is that after entering into the loom, Jesus showed them his hands, verse 20, and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. They saw the Lord. Now they are able to understand that he is the Lord. In other words, Jesus gave them proof. First, he empowered them by his presence, then he empowered them through by giving them peace, then he em empowered them by giving them proof. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we all are weak. We are human beings. 
many a time we have doubts we also worry many a time people doubt whether god is with them or not but when you humble yourself god will give you proof how do i say that yes god knows that we are weak in our faith we are weak in believing god many a time when you humble yourself god gives you sign but again i warn you that when you demand sign from god with pride in your heart he will not give you many a time jesus discouraged people who demanded a sign from him and he said no sign will be given to you except the sign of jonah okay but at the same time when thomas had his doubt jesus appeared for his sake appeared for his sake he called them and asked him to touch him when abraham had his doubt god gave him a sign when gideon had doubt he humbled himself and god gave him sign so we know that many a time god gives you proof that i am with you because we are weak in mind as well as in body so the next p that through which god strengthens us or empowers us is proof the fourth one is purpose this is what we read in verse 21 as the father has sent me even so i am sending you in other words it's not only really that jesus calls you he also sends you from that time onwards the disciples were ca- called apostles apostles means simply means sent away many a time people ask me why do we say we believe in one holy catholic and apostolic church no are you referring to roman catholic or are you referring to apostolic church no apostolic simply means is a greek word simply means sent out the church is sent out into this world every christian is sent out into this world we have a purpose to do dear brothers and sisters in christ god created you with a purpose know that for sure your birth is not accidental when god formed you in your mother's womb he had a purpose for your life the one of the many problems that modern man faces is that meaningless in life many a time many a time young people call, ask this question why am i born what am i doing in this world what am i going to do why should i live meaninglessness meaninglessness but here we see jesus christ giving them meaning in the life they thought their ministry is over since jesus has gone their ministry is over they had to go back to their own profession of fishing or any other thing now jesus said no now you start your life i am sending you i am giving you the purpose in your life dear brothers and sisters in christ there are primary purposes that god has given you in your life there are many secondary purposes also never never forget that if you ask god he will tell you what is the primary purpose for which you are created what are the secondary purposes that you you are called to accomplish or fulfill then the next p that we have in this passage is that power the first one is presence the second one is peace the third one is proof the fourth one is purpose and the fifth one is power he breathed on them and said receive the holy spirit he knew without the holy spirit these disciples are powerless even we are without holy spirit we are powerless people let me explain it because i don't want to take much time um if you look at acts chapter 1 verse 8 
there we see a beautiful word we all know that is an important uh, passage jesus said you will receive power when the holy spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses in jerusalem and in judea in samaria and to the end of the earth it's a very famous uh, verse what i would like to draw your attention to is the word power we can understand this word or what jesus said by looking into the greek word that we find in this passage you all know new testament was written in greek and the word for power in greek is dunamis dunamis now what is so important about this word now we all know that english borrows from many languages okay now english has borrowed this word and used it in different context if it is a small group i can ask you what are the english word that we have using the three consonants d n and m probably those who are close to me can tell me find the word in english that uses d n m not gibson he knows my some d n m tell me dynamite yeah no one person denim okay denim dynamite one denim one then dominion dynamo dynamic person not denim <laughs> denim is a cloth isn't it okay <laughs> that's a name let just look at these words dynamo it gives us power it gives us energy dynamic person very active person okay dynamite it can burst the rock break the rock so when jesus said you will receive the holy spirit and you will have power he said you will be like a dynamite you will be a dynamic person you will give energy to other people motivate other people empower other people because you are going to be a dynamo to your brothers and sisters in christ jesus made them like a dynamites they went all over this world and changed the whole world this is the power that jesus gave to the disciples and he gives that too and finally the last piece that privilege he said you can forgive other people i'll give you the authority you can forgive other people if you forgive the other person's sin will stand forgiven now roman catholics picks up this verse and said the priests have the power to forgive people and they have a little booth where you can go and confess your sins and the priest will forgive your sins now what jesus did is that he gave this power or authority to everyone who believes in him it is to you and me the other privileges that i would like to share with you is that from john chapter 1 verse 12 we have received the right to become the children of god and again in second corinthians chapter 5 verse 20 we are the ambassadors of jesus christ in first corinthians chapter 3 verse 9 st paul says we are the fellow workers our co-workers with god who are we yes we are human beings 
but at the same time we have the privilege of having the image of jesus christ we are breathing the breath of god we are children of god we are ambassadors of god we are fellow workers with god now jesus says forgive other people i'll give you the authority now do you use this authority do you forgive other people yes the risen lord empowers you and me through his presence by giving us peace by giving us proof by giving us a purpose in life then he gives us the power and then he assures of the privilege that we all enjoy through him today as you celebrate easter remember all these and be empowered by the risen lord if you notice let me uh, conclude my sharing with one explanation <clears throat> i hope that you know about this because i didn't write the order of service it was written long back and you have been using it again and again every year all that i want to know is whether you know what is there in the order of worship why they are particularly talking about passover where do we have the first lesson what is the connection between the passover and the easter in anglican service <clears throat> on easter day they will switch off all the lights before we start the service the whole church will be dark and we will start from the entrance we will come in a procession the choir and the pastor and i will as a pastor light a candle a big candle i have to hold it with both my hands and we will carry it and i will say see the light of jesus now that big candle refers to the pillar of fire the connection is simply this on good friday we have the friday because that was a passover and jesus died on that day now he was buried on friday evening now saturday the sabbath day he is there in the tomb rest <clears throat> then in the same way they had the passover meal in egypt they rested and on saturday night moses told them to flee from egypt so they escaped from egypt on sunday on sunday and they celebrated the liberation so the church tradition is that we celebrate easter as a festival of liberation and victory god has shared that victory with each and every one of us so today is a day of celebration it's a day of liberation it's a day of victory but today let's celebrate that jesus the risen lord is empowering us let's keep a moment of silence and let us thank god for the for empowering us through his son jesus christ who is risen loving god thank you for the beautiful passage that clearly shows how your son jesus rose from the dead and empowered people particularly in this passage we thank you for the different ways in which he empowered his own disciples who were gripped by gripped with fear who were trembling as yes, lord as we live in this world help us to realize that the risen lord empowers us every day every day by assuring of his presence 
enabling us to experience his peace giving us time and again the proof that he is with us he is active in our life and he helps us lord thank you for your empowerment by giving us the purpose in life oh lord yes master help us to know what exactly is the purpose that you have for us and help us to fulfill them lord we know that we are weak and you also know that we are weak that's why you have given us the holy spirit who empowers us every day every minute thank you for the privilege of being your children being your ambassadors being your co-workers fellow workers with you o oh lord above all thank you for the privilege to forgive other people so that the people who are suffer who feel guilty because of the sin may be assured of the forgiveness of jesus christ Yes, Lord, continue to empower us and help us to glorify your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.